Oh my god, it's water, bro. <laughs> In this video, you'll discover what sets Sri Lanka's street food apart from any other country. You want that? Sure. Oh my god. Including India. This right here, I'm very excited for. This is cow brain. But first, let's back up. According to Sri Lankan's constitution, parliament must elect a new president. Two weeks before I arrived here, Sri Lanka citizens ousted their own leader in the midst of an economic crisis. I didn't come here in search of conflict, but I did come here in spite of it. Now, amidst the aftermath, I have an opportunity to see the capital of Colombo, meet its people, and try its food for the very first time. First of all, Sri Lanka or Sri Lanka? It's Sri Lanka. Yeah! Today, I'm on a mission to experience this country's vibrant street food flavors. So this is our own version of a taco. Whipped up by skillful, passionate cooks and chefs. Take a look at this. This is the Crabzilla. And it all starts here. In Colombo, the meal that unites all ages, all professions, all people is rice and curry. In shops like this, the curry selection seems endless. Here at Lunu Marisa, lunch is about to begin. Good morning from Sri Lanka. I'm in the kitchen of a rice and curry shop and this is gonna be my first taste of Sri Lanka. Yeah. This place has a load of curries, including curries I have never heard of before. Right here, the preparation of a jackfruit curry. the jackfruit meat, then throw that in a hot pan. Add coconut milk, onions, green chilies, curry leaves, and pandan leaves. Then season with salt, turmeric, curry powder, cinnamon, and mustard paste. In only 20 minutes, these sparkling flavors meld together as one. Take a look at this. This is jackfruit that's not even ripe. It's still white. Huh? I did not ask, but she seems unbothered. It has a little bit of a tougher texture. It's not sweet. No flavors of jackfruit. If anything, it has a slight, like, kind of rind taste to it, like the green part of a watermelon. We're gonna find out why they're using that type soon. On this side, right here, we have a pork curry. Every time I go to India, I'm talking about India because that's where I've had the most curries in my life. Obviously, not many folks in India are eating beef, but I don't think I've ever had pork curry. It's made with pork belly, shoulder, ribs. All tossed in a fiery cooking vessel, along with roasted curry powder and oil. What kind of food does Sri Lankan food most often get compared to? It's often compared to Indian cuisine, but we are so unique, it's different. A delicate, volatile combination of components that make up a flavor bomb. Turmeric powder, roasted curry powder, chili powder, black pepper, salt, cardamom, garlic paste, something called Garcinia Cambogia, cinnamon, ginger, garlic, fried lemongrass, and the detonator, curry leaves. Our food and our cuisine, especially the authentic Sri Lankan Sinhalese cuisine, has a lot of herbal properties and values, so it like really nourishes you, plus it heals you, mind, body, and soul. Joining me on my mission to understand Sri Lankan food and culture, Ruzena, Sri Lankan local and food explorer. I want to jump into this. This is jackfruit. Uh, just, how do I go for it? Just dig in. Really good, right? Mm, I love it. <laughs> the flavors slowly reveal themselves. The black stuff, is that a chili? Yes, that's true. Oh, great. I just bit into one of those directly. <laughs> it doesn't taste like jackfruit at all. It just seems to be more about the texture. It has a nice kind of firm texture to it. Mmm, spicy. There's some aromatic flavors in there, too. Oh, I'm making such a mess. How am I doing here? Good? And then here, I've never seen a pork curry ever in my life. It's unique to Sri Lanka. Are you a fan of this? Uh, I haven't tried it. Oh yeah, why not? Uh, Today could be the day. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ruzena is Muslim, meaning she only eats halal food, and well, pork is not on that list. So this is some great pork. The spices are caked on there. It has a little bit of a bitterness to the spices. Not curious? I'm not. The texture of the pork is wonderful. I was thinking, is this something I maybe would have in Thailand? But I don't think yeah. so. Even though they eat a lot of pork there, this is one of a kind. I think you can only get this here. So good and an absolute first rate. It's so spicy too. <laughs> My brain is boiling. I know that there's a lot of conflict here, there's a lot of issues. Stepping out of the airport, driving down the street, as a tourist, as someone who's not been here before, it is not immediately apparent that there's such strife here. But the irony is not lost on me that we're sitting here feasting, yes. especially me as an outsider coming in, gorging on delicious Sri Lankan food, while yeah. a lot of people here can't afford food because the prices have doubled and tripled. Right now, this island nation of 22 million is experiencing its worst economic crisis since its independence in 1948. Due to poor government management, 
and the lingering effects of the pandemic, key foreign exchange earning sectors like exports, remittances, and tourism were all brutally hit. Sri Lanka is in a mess. For months, people here have suffered unpredictable blackouts and skyrocketing inflation, leading to shortages in food and fuel. Schools even had to cancel exams because paper was in such short supply. Right now, there is a food shortage. Who is this affecting the most? Actually, the farmers are the ones who are going through it all because they are trying their best to feed the nation, feed their families and do everything. So while we are feasting here, this kind of feasting you'll only see in urban cities. The moment you step out, which is the majority of Sri Lanka, you will see how it's affecting them. Because sometimes they don't even have one meal a day and they're going through it right now. Jesus. In hard times of grave uncertainty, some folks are taking whatever actions they can, whether just getting by from day to day to something much more extreme. <laughs> Meanwhile, there are others who keep doing what they do best, sticking out the tough times until those times give in to better days. Welcome to our next destination. This is the Ministry of Crab. This place is well-known, legendary, iconic for its seafood. Here you can see they have some clams. They have giant freaking shrimp like this. Oh, take a look at that. River prawns that weigh up to a pound or two, but that is not what they're known for. Of course, this place is known for the giant Sri Lankan mud crab. Up here, they've got all the typical sizes from small to extra large, and then they've got jumbo, colossal, oh my God, and crabzilla. That is what we're getting today. Take a look at this. This is my first look at it right now. This thing is a beauty. This is approximately four pounds of crab right here. Burrowed deep in the soft, muddy base of Sri Lanka's mangroves, a large crustacean distinguished by its bluish green hue. It's not even attacking me, it's like very well behaved. It's polite. A delicacy flown around the world more than Taylor Swift, mainly in the form of exports to places like Singapore. A single one of these creatures can sell for hundreds of dollars. This is like the rock's bicep put into a cloth. But for too long, these costly mud crabs weren't really eaten or appreciated in Sri Lanka. That was until 2011, when the Ministry of Crab was founded, utilizing this locally caught delicacy right in their own backyard. So we are cooking the pepper crab. It's a famous dish in Singapore. Meet Darshan Munidasa, a local chef of Sri Lankan and Japanese descent. The pepper crab has been very prominent in Singapore's crab dishes, and what they do is something very, very dry. To be the opposite, I want to create a wet pepper crab. We take black pepper. This used to be black gold in Sri Lanka because long time ago, until the Europeans came here, we had no red chili in Asia. Huge crab, crabzilla, and look at that. It's like almost like a steak. And to this, we add our magic black pepper sauce. And this is where the flavor of the crab moves into the liquid, and that becomes our signature dish, the black pepper crab. Leave it to steam for 20 minutes, and when the shell turns bright red, plate, serve, and enjoy. How do you ensure that a crab is a premium crab? Well, apart from coming from nature at a, at a good level. You can grade it before it's cooked, so it's a selection process that makes the crabs good. From 100 crabs, maybe we will choose 30. And then who eats the other ones? Your direct competitors? <laughs> Are you always selling out of the Crabzilla? Yes. It's a rarity to find one, and uh, when we get it, it's a grace of God. And today you just had one? Yes. I'm sorry, I, it's my first one, I have to. Everyone goes for the claw first. Ooh. That's almost like a steak. Oh my yeah. God, it's, it's so big. Nice. Here I go, I got a pretty good amount. Oh yeah, wow. The flavor of that sauce is really just <laughs> seeped into the meat so perfectly. It's so sweet, it's juicy. There is so much meat. Like 400, 500 grams per claw. You know, I love the idea of eating a spiny lobster, but really, there's no claws. So these crabs walk with these. Yes. It swims with these. Therefore, the biggest muscle is around that leg. You want that? Sure. Oh my God. Mm. <laughs> I never get sick of this. It's so good. So these guys are really sweet and less texture membrane-y. Mm. I grew up in the Midwest, so I have the least experience in the USA when it comes to seafood. So nobody's like looking into the hips. They just want like the big legs and that's about it. But there is so much meat hidden in all of this, but it requires a little bit of skill, a little bit of patience and some knowledge to know kind of where to break it. Wow, the sauce in here is tremendous. It's peppery, but it's delicate. It doesn't have some crazy intensity. Oh, it's mushroomy too. Are there mushrooms inside? Really? Mm. This is one of the best crabs I've ever had. 
You have restaurants all over the world. You've lived in many places outside of Sri Lanka. What keeps you here now? This is home. This is an amazing place. Where else do you find crabs like this with zero food miles? Darshan Munidasa is Sri Lanka's most renowned chef restaurateur, best known for founding some of Sri Lanka's most successful restaurants, including Ministry of Crab. How has the recent crises affected your restaurant here? Oh, it's affected everyone. All this is happening right after a terrorist attack in 2019 April followed by COVID in 2020 April, and two years down the line, we arrive at these problems. So it's been four years of non-stop. We never got a break. Has Sri Lanka bottomed out, and it's just up from here? In April of this year, the government of Sri Lanka banned the import of artificial fertilizers, pesticides, and weed decides. Two weeks before I arrived here, Sri Lankan citizens demanded their president to step down. Facing massive protests, President Gatabaya resigned on July 13. So now we've got to some point of returning to some kind of normalcy. Fuel is slowly getting into the economy and hopefully things will get back to normal faster. To an extent, we are also part of the solution. I mean, we have a hundred staff working here and I need to make sure they're also doing okay. And uh, not only them, everyone in the hospitality industry. So I think we need to rebuild and be positive and move forward. It's inspiring for me to see that so many places around the world, whether they're struggling with politics or natural disasters or, or many of the onslaught of issues that Sri Lanka has faced, you always just see a huge exodus. And this is the time that you really need people to hang out and to not give up on the country or the people. Daunting tasks and huge challenges await Sri Lanka's new leader. But at least the evaporated hope of the last regime is now starting to trickle back. Where are we right now? We are at Alut Kade. Can you see how busy it is? It's wild here. I love the mood. I love the feeling. It reminds me of certain other places I've been. I will not say the country's name. But minus the honking. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Abdul Hamid Street, a visceral street food scene in the middle of Colombo City. Locals and outsiders come here for all types of food made fast and on the spot. Our first stop, Uzman Tea Room, a 25-year-old restaurant sending out thousands of these bowl-shaped pancakes each night. This is our first thing we're going to try right here. What am I looking at? This is one of the most iconic food from Sri Lanka. Known as the egg hopper, it starts with a small hot pan, then a thin layer of batter, a blend of rice flour, eggs, sugar, coconut milk, yeast, and cooked basmati rice. Pack an egg on top and season with black pepper. So how do you eat it though? And you can fold it and then bite into it. It rolls up pretty nicely. It's in a very handleable shape. So this is our own version of a taco. Of a, of a taco. Yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty much taco. exactly like a taco. Mm. Oh my god, it's water broke. <laughs> That is awesome. It's the easiest way to eat a fried egg with your hands. Mm. The shell is so crunchy and just super soft, delicious fried egg in the middle. I love fried eggs more than anything. This is a chutney. Is this spicy? It looks definitely yeah, red. Is that too much? Uh, it's up to you. Goodbye, large intestines. <laughs> oh yeah, really salty, but really fresh too. Tons of chilies. I love it. I've never seen anything like this, Yeah. but that's fantastic. <laughs> Next stop is a 60-year-old hub, a place where locals flock when they're craving biryani. But this is biryani like you've never seen it before. To me, typically, I would think of biryani as some kind of basmati rice and maybe mutton or some kind of fatty animal, tons of oil, tons of spices. So what does biryani mean to you? It's a type of rice order. We call it biryani. Biryani. Because we have our own version. First, stir fry eggs with chilies, tomatoes, and onions. Add rice noodles, fresh milk, gravy, and season with salt, pepper, and chili powder. That is the carb. Now, for the protein, stir fried slices of marinated beef. Add chopped onions, chilies, curry sauce, ketchup, and lime juice. Plate, serve, and eat. Oh my god, let's try this out. Well, I've not tried something like this anywhere. It is real spicy. Lots of fresh chilies in there. Mm. Oh man. I like how there's a bed of the noodles, the string hopper, and on top of it, fresh tomatoes, fresh chilies, and then there's beef too. Very fresh tasting, surprisingly balanced. This is good street food. How much is it for this whole platter? Okay, so this is like a special platter, so it comes to about 2,000 rupees. I think you and I, if we hadn't eaten all day, I think we could take it down. Oh, so easy. Okay, this right here, I'm very excited for. This is cow brain. Wait, that's not a beef brain. That is a beef brain. I think that's a pig brain. No, 
it's not. Cows are so big, yes, their brain has to be bigger than a pig's house. brain. Did you ask? Yes. First, the base. Ghee is introduced to a hot pan, add chopped onions, red chilies, and green chilies. Then eggs, add salt, pepper, chili powder, curry powder, milk, roti, chopped carrots, and leeks. Now stir until the roti absorbs all the flavorful sauce. This is the base. Now for the topping. The cooking vessel awaits the arrival of an egg that cow brings. Add even more flavor with chili powder, curry powder, and salt. Then make it healthy with sliced carrots. Dump that on top of the roti and find a friend to share it with. We eat this because instead of cheese, this gives that flavor. Yeah, guys, I don't believe you, but it's got to be better than vegan cheese. So you just break off a little piece, mash it down into the roti, which has been cooked up with all these other seasonings. Let's go yes. for it. That's really good. I can't believe it. I'm not gonna call it cheese, but it is so creamy and it pairs so perfectly with this bread. This reminds me of chilaquiles in Mexico City. They take tortillas, they douse it with salsa, and then it absorbs all those flavors. And then they put some toppings, you eat it. It's like the Sri Lankan version of that. Now we have two Mexican connections. Well, th yeah, that was your connection, <laughs> the egg taco. There's something about this texture with this roti and it's like soft but chewy at the same time. Hit that with some brain. Mm, there's a really distinct differences in taste here. It's light, it's spicy. This is a bit heavier, but I still don't find it to be overly abundant with spices. It's very well balanced. So this is typical night food. It's after party food. They come here and they eat this and the next day they'll feel better, I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna feel great tomorrow. You know, it's so wild. There's a few people who I told that I was coming to Sri Lanka and they're like, oh my God, have you seen the news? <laughs> and this happened so much to me now that I don't even know what to believe when I'm watching news anymore. Yeah. If I was here one month ago, would it be a lot different than it is today? Yes, this place was completely shut down. And shut down by who? There was a big protest going on against the ex-regime. So it was just shut down. Nobody was interested because we didn't have gas, we didn't have electricity, right. we didn't have a way of moving forward with, you know, because they need to buy stuff and we need petroleum to move around. So there was nothing. So now it's completely different. Now it's getting better. There's a new leader and there's a little bit of breathing space. I don't know what happened magically, but slowly getting better. It's not that long ago that there was really like civil unrest within the country. Yeah. But now, do you feel like this place seems a bit more unified? Definitely. I think the recent protests brought everyone together because when hunger strikes, nothing else matters. People need to eat. Food is life. So when that strike, everyone unified. Do you think it'll last? I mean, how long until people turn their higher towards something else. We never know because Sri Lankan people are very innocent and if you're a very, very smart leader, you can manipulate your masses and your people. Mm. So it can happen, it may not happen. So no idea? No idea. Are you hopeful? I am hopeful. I hope that people will see through all these games, you know, like and not fall for the traps that has been put to divide and conquer. Fantastic. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. How do I know which food I'm supposed to eat with my hands and which I'm supposed to eat with a utensil? As a Sri Lankan, we eat everything by hand. Or, someone left some perfectly nice spoons over here. Oh, ta-da! I, I hate to say this, but I like silverware. The only issue, I don't like to get like chili powder and stuff under my fingernail. The neighboring country and us, we have a kind of a fight because they are saying they originated it and we are saying it's us. However, no offense to my lovely neighbors, us is better. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Fortunately, a crab fisherman recently went out to the ocean, plucked it, ocean, right? Or the mud? When, uh, I don't, he found it somewhere. Maybe on the sidewalk? What you got there? It's also called a hog plum curry. So you can eat <laughs> hog, at least. I can eat the fruit. Mm. Have you seen the brain? It's like part by part. Even our brain comes in four parts, right? We have four parts to our brain? Yeah, it's like... How many human brains have you seen? Just one or two. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Terrifying. I'm just kidding. <laughs> After this, we're going to walk down a dark alley. I cannot no, wait. No. Boom, and that is the end of the video here in Sri Lanka, Colombo. I want to say a huge thank you right here to Rosena for joining me. Not just joining me, but helping us completely plan this trip and making it possible. 
I'm so glad you're here and part of this journey. I'm so glad that you visited Sri Lanka at this time, especially, because it's going to help boost our tourism. So really grateful that you're here. You can check out Rosina at her YouTube channel, The Minority Taste. Go here, subscribe, and follow her fun food adventures. Otherwise, that is it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Oh, peace. Have you ever watched until the end? Yes, yes. So do you want me to do that? Yeah. Okay. Do it. <laughs> there you go. All right, cut. Let's go to bed. It's late. Uh, good night, everyone. Bye. <laughs>